fire helped maintain the world's grasslands for thousands of years. Roadside managers have adapted the process and now use fire to maintain healthy roadside vegetation. Applied properly, fire is a safe, effective tool for managing the right-of-ways along our rural roads as well as our public highways. With over 600,000 acres of roadside to care for, Iowa's state and county road departments are land managers on a grand scale. They benefit greatly from management techniques that can be applied safely and responsibly over large areas. Popular concern for groundwater protection has forced policymakers to seek alternatives to roadside spraying. In 1988, the Iowa General Assembly passed legislation stating that the Iowa Department of Transportation shall provide an integrated roadside vegetation management program. Preventing weeds before they start is the best way to reduce the amount of chemicals used in roadsides. Kirk Henderson, the manager of the Roadside Management Program at the University of Northern Iowa, promotes an integrated approach to roadside maintenance. Every county in the state has many, many roadsides containing prairie remnants. Burning these roadsides, it's a way of promoting the fire-adapted prairie species. In the process, you may destroy some weeds and weed seeds, but fire is not used as a substitute for herbicides. Fire can reduce herbicide use by promoting healthy vegetation that will reduce weeds in the future. Prairie vegetation has grown increasingly popular for use in roadside plantings. Naturally adapted to local conditions and featuring many species of colorful wildflowers, prairie is a logical choice for road departments trying to beautify the right of way and reduce the cost of roadside maintenance. In addition to planted prairies, many state and county roadsides contain patches of prairie that are actual remnants of the original prairie landscape. Rare and attractive, these wildflowers have found refuge in the roadsides of every county in the state. As symbols of Iowa's natural heritage, they deserve our best restoration efforts. In most cases, this involves the use of fire. By conducting prescribed burns, these plants and the community they comprise are easily managed into greater health and abundance. Iowans have a strong tradition of burning roadsides. For generations, farmers burned their ditches as part of spring cleaning to spruce up their properties. They like the way the fire eliminates last year's dead plant material, making way for fresh shoots of new grass. Still, landowners do not always derive the benefits of a properly planned, well-timed burn. In an integrated roadside vegetation management program, prescribed burning helps the roadside manager accomplish several objectives. Control trees and brush, remove thatch and litter, destroy weeds and weed seeds, restore existing native plants, and establish new prairie plantings. Fully realizing these benefits requires planning based on knowledge of plant species and how they're affected by fire. Russ Bennett is roadside manager for Johnson County. He starts planning his burns well in advance. Well, the planning process for doing a controlled burn, I like to, I like to average it out to be a year ahead of time. I like to go to a site, walk through it, get an idea of what the fields are like next to it, get an idea of what the traffic's going to be like, whether or not it's a road people have dumped trash in, what the problems are in a roadside. And I write all of that down and uh, take those notes and work with them over the winter time. And by springtime, I have a plan developed for that roadside. Planning involves locating and selecting sites to be burned, choosing the best time of year for the burn, and the appropriate wind direction. These decisions are based on the site species composition and where the prairie lies in relation to the road, as well as other features of the landscape. In a case like this, we would want a road, uh, a wind that would blow off the road so none of the smoke would get on the road, and we wouldn't want to blow it toward the interstate behind us here so we wouldn't interfere with that traffic. We would pick a day when the weather conditions were right for that, a moderate temperature, a medium to low humidity, here there isn't much brush that needs controlled. The weed population's pretty small. So a road like this won't be burned as often and the burn will be intended to bring on the prairie grasses and wildflowers. If I was burning for brush control, I might burn it every year for two or three years and then give it a break. A roadside like this will be burned once every five or six years. 
Besides checking weather conditions on the day of the burn, Russ notifies the district fire chief and nearby landowners, letting them know where he'll be burning. Signs tell drivers what is happening and convey the sense that their safety has been provided for. The flow of traffic is not interrupted because motorists are conditioned to keep right on moving when a work zone approaches. Roadside managers take every precaution when planning roadside burns to make sure the wind will carry the smoke safely away from the road. Adjacent land is an important consideration. Vegetation, buildings, and livestock must all be protected. Each burn crew must decide whether they're comfortable burning at a particular location. Listening to the weather forecast before and during the burn enables roadside managers to anticipate any changes in wind direction and velocity. If wind direction shifts unexpectedly or becomes too variable, the fire is extinguished immediately and the burn is canceled. In this case, the winds finally became steady out of the south and the burn was moved to the other side of the road. Wind speeds of 8 to 15 miles per hour are most consistent. Now the wind carries smoke away from the road and rush hour traffic speeds by unaffected. John Stiege, roadside manager for Fayette County, talks to his crew prior to conducting a roadside burn. We have a meeting before we do the burn and tell everybody what the responsibilities are. We identify any fence posts or poles or pipelines or anything like that that need to be uh, uh, protected during the burn. This roadside was selected for burning because it contains several prairie species, including a population of prairie blazing star, and because it's not been burned for several years. The primary objective for burning this roadside is to shift the species composition toward more prairie. A fire will stimulate seed production and growth of existing prairie plants. This tank truck, with its 300 gallons of water and 150-foot hose, provides a lot of insurance. Creating fire breaks is much easier with a good supply of water. Here, a wet line is established at the downwind end so that flames moving toward it are readily extinguished. The black line widens as flames are allowed to burn slowly into the wind. Crews watch closely as the blackened area becomes wide enough to prevent flame from jumping to the unburned vegetation downwind. Specialized burn equipment improves safety and increases efficiency. Backpack pumps can be carried into rough terrain and are very effective for controlling burn lines. Wetting down signposts and utility poles prevents damage from charring and overheating. Working in unison, quickly advancing the fire, the advantages of an experienced crew are readily apparent. Uh, as a public agency, we don't dare let a fire get out of control, and so we do have uh, quite a bit of burn equipment that we use. And when you have two drip torches, you can have someone lighting through the middle of the fire and you can burn in smaller segments and gives you a little more control over the operation. This roadside and railroad right-of-way contains a high-quality prairie remnant, part of which is privately owned and not included in the burn. Additional crew members are brought in to manage that side of the burn area. Used effectively, flappers can extend the water supply significantly. The trick is to quickly smother the flames without fanning them. Most roadside burn crews still burn without specialized clothing. Flame-resistant coveralls are available and recommended for state and county use. When these are not available, wear clothing made of natural fibers and solid leather boots. After the burn, flappers and remaining water are used to mop up, making sure no smoldering debris is left behind. Most prairie grasses are warm season grasses. They require soil temperatures of 60 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit before they start growing in the spring. The blackened surface will absorb the sun's energy warming the soil and giving the prairie grasses an early start, a better chance to compete with the cool season grasses. Roadsides are among the few places in rural Iowa not disturbed by cultivation. By promoting a more diverse plant community, burning improves this important habitat for wildlife. The response to fire can be dramatic. After burning, this roadside shows significantly more color than in recent years. We identified this ditch through our inventory process as one that had good uh, indicators in it. There was always some blazing star here and some shooting stars and some things like that. 
And so this is the second time we've actually burned this ditch, and each time it's responded very well with the Blazing Star and, and the other natives in it as well. The benefits of burning prairie roadsides include giving prairie grasses an early start by warming the soil, removing thatch, which allows new shoots to grow unobstructed and receive more sunlight, faster soil nutrient recycling, increased seed production, the destruction of woody invaders, and promoting healthy stands of native grasses and wildflowers. This helps road departments fulfill the requirements of Article 314.22 of the Iowa Code. A powerful yet manageable force, fire is an effective tool for roadside vegetation management. Roadside maintenance crews do need to be trained in the management of prescribed burns before a match is ever struck. Once familiar with fire behavior and basic management techniques, crew members can use fire as a safe and effective tool for roadside vegetation management, a tool consistent with today's emphasis on low maintenance, sustainable management practices. To receive more information on conducting prescribed burns as part of your roadside management program, contact the Office for Integrated Roadside Vegetation Management at the Center for Energy and Environmental Education, University of Northern Iowa, Cedar Falls, Iowa, 50614-0293 or call 319-273-2813. This video was produced by the Roadside Program at the University of Northern Iowa in cooperation with the Roadside Management Program of Black Hawk, Fayette, and Johnson Counties. Funding was provided by a grant from the Iowa Department of Transportation's Living Roadway Trust Fund. This has been a Stewart Multimedia Production.